Something interesting that I want to talk about regarding Sonic Frontiers has been kind of on my mind for a bit, and it has to do with the story of the game. So last year, initially, we thought that Sonic stories would probably change for the better or just go in a direction that more people would enjoy, aka the stories taking themselves seriously again. Because as we all know, in the last 10 years, Sonic stories have not been up to par, and they have most definitely felt like jokes. And nothing but that. Jokes. And on the English translation side of things, it has made the stories feel even worse than they already were, with a lot of forced jokes and a lot of cringe moments and a lot of terrible characterization. And last year, we all discovered that Pontac and Graf, the people who have been on the English translation side and writing side of Sonic games for the last 10 years, were not going to be writing Sonic games any further. And this had given me and a lot of other people hope that maybe Sonic stories will go back to how they used to be or even be something even better. So of course, months of speculation of who's going to be writing the new Sonic games and of course fans who want a specific person to write them. And what do you know, it turns out that it was announced that Ian Flynn, the writer of the current IDW comic series, was going to be on Sonic Frontiers. And they came out swinging saying Ian Flynn is the writer. But now just recently in an interview with Azuka, he specifically mentions that Ian Flynn is writing the dialogue. Now this doesn't mean that Ian Flynn isn't also just a general writer, but it really seemed like Azuka was trying to reiterate over and over that Ian Flynn is the dialogue writer. And honestly, it kind of feels like a big curveball since they hyped up and advertised Ian Flynn being the writer of the game. Now, it's not a bad thing that Ian Flynn is just a dialogue writer. At least to me personally, the dialogue of Sonic is something that really matters a lot. It can make or break the feel of the character. Because clearly, I'm not that happy with how Sonic has been the last 10 years. And writing the dialogue to make it feel like Sonic will add to the characterization a thousand percent. And if Ian Flynn Flynn can successfully make Sonic sound like Sonic and feel like Sonic with the dialogue, then it might be enough to carry the story. Azuka in an interview also even states that Ian Flynn is great at the voice of Sonic. Now, I don't know how much I can take Azuka's word for that, but that makes me happy to hear that Sonic is going to be a lot more snarky again. Sonic needs to be snarky, cool, and headstrong, and not a pun machine if I'm being quite honest. <laughs> Baldy nose hair! And some of you guys may not like Roger Craig Smith, and he's not my favorite Sonic either, but if the writing is good and he can deliver on those lines, then even not being my favorite, I can accept it. Plus, you know, if I really needed to, I could just switch the game to Japanese. But I don't know, personally, I have a very good feeling about Roger in this game. I feel like he's gonna bring it this time. Now we need to think about the other aspect to this. This game could have Sonic Forces pacing when it comes to the story mode. And by that, I mean a lot of things not making sense or adding up, tell instead of showing, and underdeveloped plot lines. If those three things are present that were present in Sonic Forces storytelling, then I don't think the dialogue can really carry it, even if Ian Flynn is writing the dialogue. Execution matters very greatly because Sonic Forces was supposed to be a darker game quote unquote on paper and on paper it is a darker game in the series but in execution it's very silly and doesn't make any sense. Like Sonic being described as being tortured for six months but we see him happy kicking his feet making puns. They can put the pen to the paper but they just have to put in the execution for the Frontier story to truly hit. One thing that I will give almost every single game in the last 10 years besides Lost World is that almost all of the premises of the games are really cool if I'm being honest. The premise of Sonic Forces is pretty cool where Eggman actually gets to dominate the world. Sonic Colors. Eggman enslaves alien species and uses it to create a giant amusement park. That's almost like an evolved version of Eggman Land but in space. Then we have Sonic Generations where Eggman utilizes a time monster to make Sonic beat himself from his past and make him go through his old adventures. I really do think that Sonic Team is great at creating premises for these games, but it's always the execution that lacks. Even in Sonic Generations, the story is not that prominent, but I will say on a personal note with Generations, I do think it is better that way. If the execution of Sonic Frontiers' story can actually be great, then they don't have to be carried by dialogue. They can just be a great overall story. Now that we know that the game is likely not made around Ian Flynn's story. And to me that begs the big question, who is writing the story for this game? If we go back to Sonic Forces, we can see that the game actually had four writers, Pontac and Graf, and as well 
well as the Japanese writers, Makoto Goya and Itaro Toyota. And correct me if I'm saying those names wrong, but I believe they are the ones that have come up with the main story of the game. And we know Pontac and Graf translated it and localized it for everything else. And looking into Itaro, he has actually been there since Sonic Adventure. And a lot of his work on these games have been as level designers and game designers. But Sonic Forces was his first Sonic story he has ever written. And as for Makoto, they actually serve as a writer for most of their work with Sega, with games such as Shenmue 2, the first Shenmue Dragon Force, Rhythm Thief, and their first Sonic game ever was also Sonic Forces. So you may be thinking then, well, they're probably going to be the writers of Sonic Frontiers then. And to that I say, probably not either. The last game before Forces was Lost World, and neither of them written for Lost World. And the last writer for Lost World was actually Haramasa Nakajima. And the only Sonic game they have ever written was Sonic Lost World, and they've only served as game designers. So what this is telling me is that it seems like Sega is just pulling random staff to write their Sonic games. And it's very clear to me that minimal effort was put into these Sonic game stories. But in the roundup of Sonic Frontiers and articles and interviews, Azuka has actually stated that it's going to be different this time around. He says, The storytelling techniques we're using for Frontiers are a little bit different. We wanted to have you experience things as Sonic would experience them in a very mysterious format. You show up on the island, but why are you here in the island? What even are these islands? That's the mystery we wanted to set up and have you figure out as you explore the islands. And this evidence could be pointing towards that there are a lack of cutscenes or it's a more environmental storytelling type of game in a way like Metroid. And personally, I'm down for that, but again, it all depends on the execution. But Azuka has a bit more to say, and he talks about how this whole mystery aspect of the game is a lot more complicated than most platformers where there's the bad guy that does something wrong and you must stop them. So that's a big change from how Sonic games have been in the last 10 years, and it seems like there's going to be a more narrative focus outside of stop the bad guy. And if I'm being quite honest, that does make me quite happy to hear, but obviously it could turn out not that great. But overall, I just want this game to actually have a decent story for once. And if it can have a decent story, it needs to have some characterization. But I'm kind of at the point right now with Sonic where I shouldn't be trying to overlook certain aspects of it because it gets carried by another aspect. And there's a lot of games that do have that issue as well, but it's very apparent with Sonic games where you have to overlook something. And I'm kind of tired of doing that. Because if the story is going to be bad, it's going to be bad, and it's going to be a blemish on the game no matter what. And of course, Sega needs to be more clear on what Ian Flynn's role is is in this game, I'd really like to know who is writing this game. Because if it's yet another Sega employee that's never written a Sonic game before, it's going to be kind of worrying in my opinion. So hopefully that isn't going to be the case, and maybe it can be a previous writer of the Sonic series. And honestly, I doubt that being the case, but I think best case scenario is that the writer will just be overall Ian Flynn, and that Azuka didn't mean that he's just writing the dialogue. I gave up on Sonic stories a long time ago as I've gotten older because as I've gotten older, they've gotten increasingly more childish. It's insane how the story went in the opposite direction of me getting older. The stories were a lot more mature the younger I was, and I want to see that reverse back. But those are my thoughts on the Ian Flynn situation. Make sure you guys drop a like and comment, and make sure you are subscribed so you can see more content like this. And like always, I'll see you in the next one. Well, whatever happens, happens.